Welcome to the Bible Reading Project. It is Thursday. Hope and inspire you to read your Bible every single day. Zero excuse. I'm with my best friend, Ronnie John, Ryan Heff, Holdeman Leon. <laughs> Hanging out. We keep giving each other more and more yeah. and more names, but it's a sign of true endeared friendship. That's so true. Matthew chapter 11. We just gave away 20 bucks yesterday. Do you feel good about that? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't even my money, right? <laughs> That's what I felt like I lost there. I felt like, you know, and what I'd like to say about you, most people don't know, yeah, is that you had an opportunity to give and didn't. And I like that about you. It's like, I'm not swayed by pressure. Yeah. I like that. It's I probably not, would have been like a few months if ago. If any other lead pastor had been in front of me <laughs> and gave yeah. $20, you buy, I'm going to give 30 Yeah. Because you would have wanted to impress them yeah. and maybe get on my good side. Mm -hmm. But that tells everybody you're already on my good side. That's right. Like you didn't even offer to help me. Nope. You didn't say, hey, can I give five to Josh the cheater? Yeah. No. You just sat there very quietly, not even pressured at all as you watched my money fly away. And I know it wasn't flying away. You were planting a seed. I was seed. planting a seed. And yet you got to enjoy the harvest of that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Josh texted me. Oh, did? What did he say? Yeah, he said... He, he cheated, I know. He, he sent me a screenshot of the Venmo, and he said, LOL, why he say cheating? Yeah, because I, I put that in my little text. I said, uh, for Bible reading, cheating. Yeah. Cheating and on the Bible reading project. It feels like like it's an incomplete sentence, so mm -hmm. that is a sign of guilt. Yes, yeah, see? I told you. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. And he got my $20. I'm going to ask for it back. Yeah. But, but I, I won't... I want people to know who watch us because there's some people now that are getting to know us better. Yes. And they're like probably going to give us Christmas presents and Dude. they love us. Somebody <laughs> came up to the church the other day and said, I just want you to know yeah. I love y'all. And I said, well, thank you so much. They said, I love how y'all laugh and cut up. Just brings joy to my day. Uh -huh. Then this one woman, you know what she said? What? I was just shocked. She said, do you know what I do? I said, I ain't got a clue. <laughs> she said, I sit on my little jumpy tramp. What's the thing? little jumpy, bouncy tramps. Oh, okay. The little bounce. And she bounces while she exercises and listens to us banter about the Bible. I feel like we should probably cater this episode to her. If she's putting that kind of commitment, like, since she's probably having to watch like this, mm -hmm. like, ooh, 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 ooh. Mm -hmm. we should probably Let's up and down. do the rest of the episode. Like, mm -hmm. what if, though? What just sit back down. So, like, she doesn't get dizzy, like, just think, for her. Think about this. Though. Okay. We're not only inspiring. That's probably a lot of jiggling, so I apologize. We're not. Yeah, might, might have to blur that out. We're not talking about inspiring people just to read the Bible. We're helping people get in shape, dude. We didn't even know that spiritually and physically, spiritually and physically, shapefulness right now by watching. That should the probably Bible be our new tagline. Like she's like, I just sitting there. My this is what she said. My daughter even laughs at me laughing at y'all. <laughs> right? That's awesome. Like we're inspiring people. Yeah, that's so, awesome. And they're just watching us banter. So here's what I thought we could do to help her. Okay. And she's not pudgy. It's right. not like, so then that made me think, oh my God, if we have a long 20 minute, she could weigh 20 pounds. <laughs> right? Oh, I mean, yeah. The longer our Bible reading are going, yeah, she's going to get down to her, her husband, like, honey, what's wrong with you? You're, you're down to 80 pounds. Yeah. And she's like, well, I love that Bible reading. Right. So we either need to, like, send a pizza to her house. Right. Like, just I'll get the address, and we'll just ship her a pizza. Yeah. Probably. I'll like say, hey, maybe you want to eat this. Yeah, bit. right. Or we need to cut down the banter. So, because right now, we've been on about six minutes. She's been jumping the whole time. Wow. You're right? So, she's I've, getting skinnier while we I feel we like when, because we're not going to stop bantering. We'll never stop bantering. We it's just impossible. We should probably do the pizza route. I think if we just keep on, she'll be able to run a marathon soon. Dude, that'd be awesome. Like an Olympic star, and she has that we on her chest. We could sponsor her. Like, yeah, she'll have the Bible Reading Project logo mm -hmm. like on her jersey. Or whatever. Shout out to you. You know who you are. Yeah. Bouncing on that trampoline right now. We love you. Yes. And we're glad you follow us. We're glad you're in shape and losing weight. And I think before she does a marathon, like it'd be fun to like promote her marathon running. If she just came and stood in that corner on her just trampoline and That's just the whole idea. time and laughing at us. So we would offer you that. Yeah. If you want to come and be on the Bible reading show and bring your jumpy tramp. Yeah. You can do the jumpy tramp while we banter. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And so we'll be doing fitness as well. Yeah. As well as spiritual fitness. Yeah. And I think I'll be doing a chin up too. In a world like this, it's just hellaciously anxious. A little humor goes a long way. Sure does. We, we quit bantering, right? Yes. And when we quit bantering, did you know on the news, anxiety went up? Yeah. Anxiety in the nation went up, and they're like, anxiety's at an all-time high. And I'm like, dude, I'm bantering. Right. If we can bring a little bit of peace to each other, a little bit of dorkiness, because we both know we're dorky, yeah. and we're good with it. If it makes yes. people laugh, if it brings hope. So welcome back to the Bible Reading Project, where we get you spiritually and physically fit. Mm. Amen. That's our new logo. Amen. Motto. Amen. Tagline. 
It's our new something. Just pretend this never happened. Okay. I love it. You ready? Matthew 11. You know what I'm talking about all week? And what I'm jumping in on is when you're back against the wall and you're going to have to determine what do you believe, Mm -hmm. we want to talk about how we connect up to Scripture. So I'm just going to pull them out, Matthew chapter 11, Mm -hmm. um, and we've been talking about, I'm going to have to come back to this Scripture in a minute because I want to share it. Matthew chapter 11, and this is what it says about John the Baptist. His back is up against the wall. Verse 2, he's in prison. Verse 3, he does what anybody would do that feels backed against the wall. Dude, you got to help a brother out. I don't know if I be- what I believe is true. Jesus connects himself to Scripture. Yeah, I am a voice. I, I am uh, healing people. The blind see, the lame walk. Then he starts talking about John. Mm-hmm. He connects John up to Scripture. And... Uh, He connects John up to Elijah and says, um, look, I'm sending a a messenger ahead of you. Now I want you to listen because I asked you the other day, how do we practically take Scripture when I'm backed against the wall and I connect myself to that so that I become what the Bible says about me versus the reality? And you made this comment yesterday that most times those are 180 degree apart. What the Bible says about me versus how I feel like my life's going. Yeah. The Bible says that I can have a great marriage. Mine's terrible. The yeah. Bible says that God will meet all my needs. I'm about to lose my house. The Bible says that God's going to protect me. We, you shared that story the other day, but but I'm going to get fired if I don't get vaccinated. Right? So I want to turn to the Gospel of John. So go to John, all right? And John, in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, John tells the story of Jesus coming on the scene, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so John is coming, and he begins to testify, and John the Baptist begins to testify. And this is verse 19. This was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders sent priests and temple assistants from Jerusalem to ask who you are. Who are you? He came right out and said, I'm not the Messiah. Well, then, who are you, Elijah? No, he replied. Are you a prophet that we are expecting? No, then who are you? Are you ready? Mm. Mind-blowing. Mm. It gets so good. We need an answer because those people sent us, what do you have to say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice shouting in the wilderness, clear the way of the Lord's coming. Mm-hmm. Right? So now put the whole p- package together. John is preaching Jesus. Right. They're threatening him. This is before prison, pre-prison. Yeah, right. I need to know who you are, bro. Okay, man, I'm not a prophet. I'm not that good. Tell you what I am. I'm a voice of one calling in the wilderness. He connected himself to Isaiah, right? Yeah. So now he has this personal uh, this personal connection to Scripture. Right. Right? Right. He has connected his life personally to Scripture. So he's going that way. He finds himself where Scripture is. It's not really seeming his reality anymore. Yeah. Out here in the wilderness when I'm by myself eating locusts and honey and wearing camel hair, dude, that scripture's mine. Right. But when he's in prison and they're about to maybe put him to death, he's like, yeah, I just don't know. Jesus has to remind him that was the dude that's a voice of one calling in the wilderness. Yeah, right. Prophet spoke this about him, Uh right? So... I said yesterday that I would try to help practically when you feel backed against a wall Mm -hmm. and your marriage isn't working, your money isn't working, your life isn't working. And then you and I may say this, well, you just need to know who you are in Christ, right? Yeah. Well, that's great if I'm not in the middle of hell. Yeah. So here's point one. You ready? You may want to write these down because they're brilliant. All right. Point one, and this is what I've learned. Uh It's very hard to fight when you're in prison, when you've done no prep, right? Yeah. John knew ahead of time he was the voice of one calling the wilderness. Yeah, right. And he still questioned it. Yeah. But he had obviously known before that he had settled something. Right. Point one, it's best to settle what you believe before you find yourself in a hole. That's good. The worst time to try to get faith is in a hole. Right. Right? Right. Oh, my God, I'm falling apart. I don't know what to do. Tell me what to do. Read your Bible. It doesn't work. Pray. Right? Because when you're already in the hole and you've done no prep work, the hole is darker. Right. Example. Um, I want to go run. 
right? Okay. So I'm going to go run a 5K. Yeah. But if I've done no prep work, yeah. the 5K is much harder in the day than being prepped. Right. Example. One of the first times I ran in a race, me and a friend, I used to run all the time. Shocking, I know. Wow. Ran all the time. Every single day I was out running, burning the pavement. And so me and my friend thought, we're going to run a, a, a 5K. I uh-huh. think it was a 10K, I think. Okay. We're going to run. And so the town put on this big race. He and I show up. Dude, he ate a bunch of cereal before. Like, I'm ready. <laughs> like, he's going to start eating healthy on day one. <laughs> so it's literally true. He gets up the day of the race, yeah. and he decides, today, because I'm running, I'm going to eat healthy. All right? <laughs> I get up. I'm like, we always run. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm just ready to go. And all of a sudden, the whistle went, and the, the front runners, the people who are fit, yeah, I should have been in the back. Uh-huh. They just take off sprinting. Yeah, right. Well, me and my friend are like, dude, I didn't know they could run this fast. Let's oh, go. Gosh. So we both just take off. We make it about a mile and a half, two miles in. He's throwing up because oh, he had too much milk and cereal. <laughs> and I'm like having an asthma attack. Oh, gosh. Now, I said that to say that you just have to train right. Yeah, yeah. If you expect good outcomes. So back yourself into a hole. My marriage is terrible. I don't know what to do. We'll deal with that in a minute. But before your marriage becomes terrible, before you go broke, before you lose your job, you need to be doing some Bible prep work. Yeah, You need to be reading the Scripture, connecting yourself to Scripture, and connecting yourself to, I'm going to build my faith. All right? Number two, my opinion. I think everybody needs a life Scripture. Mm, That's good. John the Baptist. Well, I'm the voice of one calling in the wilderness, and I've been connected to Isaiah. Yeah, right. right? right. My life scripture is Ecclesiastes 3.11. Right. For God makes all things beautiful in his time, and he's put eternity in the hearts of men. Yep. That is my life scripture, that, that when things fall apart, I go to, I know what God has promised me. Right. God has promised me if I'll hang in there, he will make anything beautiful if I don't give up and I give him the time. So that when I find myself backed up, I'm not trying to go dig out scriptures. I've already prepared what I believe. Right. All right. It's good. Number three. So I get I get a life scripture. Number three. Write out what you believe about yourself. It's good. Right. In relationship to God. Yeah. I'm not a loser. I'm not going to lose my marriage. Right. My marriage is going to be wonderful. I call it the blessing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I teach my kids, become your blessing, not your problem. That's good. But most of us get back here in the problem moment. Yeah. And rather than going, no, I don't, I, man, I'm blessed. Yeah, yeah. I curse myself. It's always this way. It never goes good. Nothing ever goes my way, right? So you end up, you end up questioning scripture. You end up questioning yourself. Yeah. You end up questioning your circumstances. And I just don't think you fight well that way. And I think we can preach to those kind of folks. Go, you just need to believe. You just need to read your Bible. So number one, you got to do your prep work. Right. You need to get up. I know we joke, but you need to get up every day and read your Bible, or go to bed and read your Bible, or read your Bible in the middle of the day. Right. Why? It's prep work. Right. Put your miles in. Uh, you know, do your training, do your stretches. Well, this is the spiritual. It's good. Number two, get a life scripture. Get something that you know the Bible says about yourself. And go, this is what I'm going to hold on to in every battle, man. I'm going to use this scripture. My mother does it this way. She says, do you have a foot problem? Get a foot scripture. You got an eye problem? Get an eye scripture. You got a lust problem? Get a lust scripture. You got a marriage problem? Get a marriage scripture. Then number three, after you've done your prep work and you've gotten your scripture and you've kind of made it yours and you've held on to it, you have to... You have to label out the things that God says about you, uh-huh. not what you say about yourself. And, and again, I say to live your blessing over my daughters, right? Most people who know Robin and I know this to be true. I always teach my daughters, become your blessing and not your problem. Yeah. But I have 33 blessings that I speak over them. I bless you with, and every time they had a problem that they faced, I put a blessing on it. Right. Don't become that problem, become this blessing. That's good. Don't become fear, become this. Don't become that, become this. Yeah. And I spoke it over them all the time. That's good. So so when somebody says to me, man, you need to know who you are in Christ. Right. This is how I would say that. You need to do your prep work, right? Number two, you need a life scripture. Yeah. Someone says, this is what the Bible says, and I will become this. 
And then you need a whole list of promises. I call them blessing, yeah. blessing statements. Things the Bible says I am. I'm healed. I, I, I do out. I am healed. I don't live a sick life. I live a, I live a healthy life. Right. I will die long and old. I will live all my days out. I, I lay all that out. I think that's a practical way that any of us who feel backed up in a corner, questioning what we believe, feeling like things don't work, I think those three things are just a practical way to really fight it out. It's good. So question, do you have a life scripture? Yeah, Matthew 6, 33. Lay it on me. Uh, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all of these things will be added unto you. You know, and all these things, you know, in those in the context he's talking about money. Mm -hmm. But to me, that means more than that, that all the things that try to worry me and distract me and get me off track from what God has called me, you know, whether it's for my life or for that day Mm -hmm. specifically. Just to be reminded that, He's got all that taken care of. So good. If he'll even clothe the flowers of the field and feed the birds, so yeah, he'll good. take care of me. Yeah. Tomorrow, I would like to add one more. Yeah, uh, let's do it. We'll right. come in tomorrow on Friday. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.